freezing eggs every spring and summer when they are abundant and stashing them away in the freezer for when the girls slow down laying in the fall and in the winter. And I think freezing is the best way to preserve them. So I'm going to show you how I do that. And I'm also going to show you what they look like once they're thawed and you cook them up because they are a little bit different, but they are still delicious. You don't need anything fancy for freezing eggs, just a small bowl to crack them two at a time into and then a larger bowl for mixing them. You'll need some sort of an off bowl to put the shells in and then containers for freezing the eggs in. And then if you wanna freeze individual eggs, you will need something like a silicone muffin pan. Here's how I do it. First of all, eggs freeze best when they're mixed up first, when the yolk and the whites are combined, as opposed to just freezing an entire egg. So I start by cracking them in a small bowl, and I like to use a small bowl, and I crack them two at a time into this, just in case there were to be a bad egg. It would be just devastating to be cracking that 16th egg into your big bowl and have it be a rotter and have, and have you lose the whole batch. So two at a time works well for me. I also like using a glass bowl for this. That way, if I feel like I got a shell fragment in there that I need to go hunting for, I can just lift the bowl up and look underneath it and see where it is. And it's also a lot easier to get a shell fragment out of a little bowl than it is a big bowl. And then once I have two eggs cracked into the little bowl, I can just pour them into the bigger bowl. And this goes really fast once you get going. The next step is to mix them up, and there is actually a little bit of a technique to this. I like to use a fork, and I always start by poking the yolks just so that they break up a little bit easier, and then I like to use a gentle swirling motion to stir them. I know this seems obvious or maybe a bit fussy even, but my goal is to not incorporate air into the eggs, which is why I'm not using a whisk, and also why I'm making sure to keep the fork submerged in the eggs at all times. I'm not bringing it in and out of the eggs. I'm really just trying to avoid air because of course, air is the enemy of frozen food. This is about what the eggs should look like when they're done, mostly uniform with a few streaks of white or yolk still left behind, that's just fine. Um, the important thing is that you don't overmix them. As far as what to freeze your eggs in, I really love these freezer containers. I have used them for years. You've probably seen me use them before. They're reusable over and over. They're very easy to use and they do a great job at protecting food in the freezer. I'll put a link to these in the video description below. This right here is the 32 ounce. This is what I use most often for eggs and it can hold about 16 large eggs. This next smaller size is the 16 ounce and it can hold about eight eggs. And then this small size is the eight ounce and it can hold about four eggs. Next, I carefully pour the eggs into the container. And I really like doing 16 eggs at a time because I can just take out one quart of these eggs, keep them in the fridge, and we can use them all week long. And these are ready to go in the freezer. They don't need anything added to them. No salt, no sugar, no dairy, nothing. They're perfect just the way that they are. And while I have these full here, let me point out one other thing that I really like about these containers. They have a natural fill line on them. There's a ridge on the side. I'll show you right here with my finger so you know how high to fill it up so you don't overfill the containers and they don't just bust open in the freezer. The last step is to put the lids on and then the labels because we always, always label our freezer containers. And with these, I like to release a little bit of the air. I just push down, lift the lid a little bit and it will suck some of the air out. And then these are ready to go right into the freezer. And if you followed all of my directions and if you're using really good containers, these will keep in the freezer for up to two years with no reduction in quality. One question I get is why even bother freezing them? Why don't you like sell your extra eggs? And let me tell you, these are so precious to me. They're pastured, they're organic. I knew the hens that laid them, so I'm going to hoard them. And you know, having a stash of eggs in the freezer for when the girls slow down during the molt and not having to go to the store and buy eggs when you have a whole flock of chickens is priceless. Okay, but what about freezing eggs individually? Well, I'm gonna start with a big old don't. Don't do what I'm doing here. I'm actually sacrificing these two eggs so that I can show you what they look like once they're thawed. There's a much better way to freeze eggs individually. Here's how you do it. You gotta mix them up first, just like we did before when we were freezing a lot at a time. And let me just say, I actually don't freeze individual eggs anymore. I just don't prefer it. I find that they tend to get freezer burn a little bit faster and I always either have fresh eggs or I have a tub of frozen thawed eggs in the refrigerator. But I know that some people find them really handy and love to have individual eggs frozen. 
And that begs the question, well, if you mix them all up, how do you know how much one egg is? Well, you can measure it out. One egg is about three tablespoons worth. And you can see here, they're kind of hard to measure. This, the nature of eggs, makes them hard to scoop. And I'll show you what it looks like just for the sake of showing you, but I think there's a better way to measure them out. And you don't have to overthink this one. I know that I cracked three eggs into this bowl, so I am gonna take all of these beaten eggs and divide them as evenly as I can amongst three of the muffin cups. And eggs vary a little bit in size anyway, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Just get them as close as you can. One other thing to note, a little pro tip here, especially if you're filling an entire 12 cup silicone muffin tray, put it on something before you fill it, like a small baking pan or cutting board so you can transport it because these things are flimsy. All right, here's what they look like frozen. This is just the ones that are all mixed together in a container. This is a small one, so it's four eggs, but they look perfect and beautiful. And these are the individual eggs, of course. This one here is one that I mixed together first. So this would be a whole egg. You could thaw this and use it in baking or whatever you need one egg for. Looks pretty good. And I would just throw these into a plastic Ziploc freezer bag. And over here are the ones that I froze whole. These are the ones I just cracked right into the muffin cups without mixing them up first. And remember, this is the thing that I said not to do. They just don't handle the freezer very well. They get dried out on top in an odd manner. They get freezer burned quickly. They have a shelf life of about six months and the yolk turns really weird. I'll show you what that looks like once it's thawed. See, look at how weird this looks. It's like any part of the yolk that wasn't submerged under the white becomes really dried out. And the weird dried part aside, which you can lessen if you take a little bit more care with these and maybe cover them up, which I didn't do. But aside from that, the other thing that happens is the yolk gets super thick and gelatinous, and it refuses to blend with the whites. Even if you stick this in a high-powered blender and try to blend it up, it will not. So the only way to use this is pretty much as a fried egg. And I am gonna fry one of these up to show you what it looks like. Here are the blended eggs, and I'm gonna warn you, they, they don't look good. They look pretty awful once they're thawed. They, they look like, I call it congealed Velveeta cheese. But don't worry, these actually do cook up into pretty normal looking scrambled eggs. And you can see here that they've separated just a little, like some of the liquid has come out. So before I cook these, I just give them a good stir to bring them back together. It doesn't, Im it doesn't improve their appearance, but it will help them cook up a little bit better. First, I'm going to show you what the whole frozen egg looks like, the one that I didn't smash up to show you. So I have some butter melting and my hot skillet. And watch the whites. This is another thing that I don't like about a whole frozen egg is look at how much those spread out. They have no body left to them. And then you have this big, puffy, gelatinous yolk in the center that's just really not going to get cooked. Now, if you don't like your yolk cooked much, maybe this is for you, but this is not how I like my eggs. And because those whites spread out so much, they cook really fast, like in about 20 seconds, which doesn't leave that really big yolk very much time to cook. Now, I suppose you could smash the yolk down a little bit and that would make it cook faster or more evenly, but I don't know. At least now you've seen it and you can decide for yourself if this is something you wanna do. Okay, now for the eggs that went into the freezer pre-mixed. Again, just heating my skillet with a pat of butter and you can cook these however you like to cook your scrambled eggs. And you can see these are still looking pretty awful, but they're about to start getting better. And you can use these for whatever you would use a whisked or blended egg for. Of course, just simple scrambled eggs like I am using here. You could also use them for an omelet, for a quiche, a frittata, and of course, for pretty much anything baking. I'm gonna flip these. I'm gonna stir them around a little bit and you can see here where they've cooked. They're definitely starting to look more like regular scrambled eggs. I do think that because these are thicker than a non-frozen whisked egg, they do cook up just a little bit different. Like you have to use a slightly different technique to cook them because they don't just kind of run and fill the pan like a normal scrambled egg does. But you'll get the hang of it really quick. I'm actually a little out of practice. I haven't made frozen scrambled eggs in quite a while. And if you are making something like a quiche, it's pretty much the same as using non-frozen eggs. The one thing to take into account is that because these are thicker, if you're adding like vegetables or cheese, you might have to stir it in a little bit more or kind of push it down into the eggs to have it in the middle of the quiche. 
These have a texture that is very similar to regular eggs, maybe a little bit more firm, and the taste is exactly the same as non-frozen eggs. If you're not sure that you like them or you have really picky eaters, I'd recommend doing a test batch. Just freeze up a few eggs, try them, make sure you like them before you commit to more. Okay, and now the egg that was frozen whole. Uh, the whites are actually really nice. I like the way that the whites cook up. It's just the yolk that's still the problem. It's still very gelatinous, pretty much exactly the same as it came out of the freezer, and it's basically not cooked. It doesn't taste bad at all, and if you're somebody who likes a really, really not cooked yolk, you might really enjoy this. I think for me it's just the texture. If I'm going to eat a not cooked yolk, which I really do like, I want it to be luxurious and runny. I don't want it to be like jello. There, now you know all about freezing eggs. Let me know if you have any questions, and if you found this video helpful, I would love it if you could give it a thumbs up, and make sure to subscribe to my channel so that you are the first to know whenever a new video is posted.